Hi, my name is Raymond Camden and I am a developer evangelist for Adobe. Today I'll be talking about the file API under PhoneGap. Now it's important to note that the file API is actually an implementation of the HTML5 file API. When I first read the PhoneGap docs, I felt a bit lost as to actually how to use this. Well, keeping in mind that this is actually a different spec, it's actually HTML5, you can find more documentation outside of the PhoneCap site. I really, really recommend the HTML5 Rocks File API Guide. It was really instrumental in helping me understand the API as a whole, both for desktop browsers as well as within PhoneCap as well. Everything you learn on that guide, you can apply just as easily within PhoneCap. Now, as you can imagine, a file API provides the support for working with file systems. So you'll have all the kind of basic things that you expect. You can look at a directory, you can list its contents, you can look at files, you can create, you can write to, you can delete, you can move, etc. Basically, anything that you would expect to be able to do on, on a server side application, like with Cold Fusion, you can also do with PhoneGap as well. So what I've done is build a very simple demo that shows just a few of these APIs. Let's take a look at it. So what I have here is some basic HTML that's going to allow me to test various different functions. You can see I have one for creating or appending uh, to the test file, reading from the file, getting metadata about the file, erasing it, and just doing a real basic directory list. All right. My application begins with one important thing, a device-ready event handler. You don't want to do anything device-specific until PhoneGap basically says, hey, I'm ready to go. So almost every single phone app, uh, PhoneGap application will have something like you see on line 123 here. Once I've done that, the first thing I need to do is actually ask for the file system. Now there's two types of file systems, persistent and temporary. Obviously, you would use the one that makes sense for your use case. Most times, you'll probably want the persistent file system. Once I've requested that, we can look at the callback handler for that. What I get sent back is a file system object. I'm going to cache that and use it uh, throughout the rest of my application. It's essentially like a handler to the disk drive on my device. Once that works, once it actually succeeds, and I want to make sure it does, I've then added event handlers for all those buttons. And again, all those are doing is uh, testing various parts of our file API. Let's look at the first one, the do directory listing. What I can do is use the root property of our file system object. This will uh, point to a directory. And I can create a reader from that. This reader exists just to list directory entries. So on that object, I can call read entries. It takes two attributes, the success handler and the error handler. In our success handler, and our function got files, I am passed an array of either file entries or directory entries. These are both simple objects that look very, very similar. They have a name, they have a full path. They also have a flag is file and is directory so we can see what type of entry it is. You can see in this handler here, all I've done is simply gone over that loop and written out the screen. If we take a quick look at that, I'm going to click that show directory contents and you can see it appended what's in my directory now. Let's look at actually creating a file. That callback function was do append file. Now, the, the way that I can create a file is by simply asking for the file. You'll see in my handler here, I said create equals true. That's basically telling the API that it's OK if it's not there. If it's not there, just make it for me anyway. Once I have that, I again have a, a callback to handle actually getting that file access. And then once I do that, I can begin writing with it. Now, if you're not getting it yet, everything in this file API works with callbacks. So we had a call to get the file, that fired a callback. We'll then have a API call to actually write to it, and that's going to have a callback as well. 
You can see here on lines 60 to 67, I'm creating a writer on that file entry, and that's going to actually handle appending to my file. Note that to handle and append, we have a seek operation, which allows it to go to anywhere in the file. In this case, I'm going to the entire length, so I can write to the end. And all I'm doing is writing some simple text. You can also actually write binary data as well. Once that's done, it will append to the web app. And if we take a look at that, I've done the create. And now if I want to read it, I can see there's my line. Let's look at that code. Again, for the reader, I'm going to get the file again. And in this case, I'm, get, I'm running a read file callback. And that's going to work with a file reader API. That API allows me to either read as text or read as binary. And again, I have a callback in this one, and in this case called onload in. That will be past the actual result of that file read. And because it's plain text, I can just append that right onto the page. Let's look at one more example, the metadata. This also is going to fire a callback. So I request my file again, and I say get metadata and point it to this callback right here. Now currently, the only supported data in there is the modification time. And I'll tell you when, when the file was last changed. If we go back to our app, we can get that and see it was last modified a few minutes ago. Now, as our last example, we can also delete a file. Once again, I'm asking for the file handle. And once I get it, I can then call the remove function on it. That also takes a callback. In this case, all I'm doing is logging that the file was removed. So if I run that button, it'll kill the file. And if I do the directory list again, it will show that the file is gone. So that is a quick look at most of the file API. There is more in there. I encourage you to check the docs out at PhoneGap and also HTML5Rocks.com. I'm Raymond Camden. Thank you very much.